is up you guys and welcome back to another episode of who was really better and as you guys can see we're gonna talk about the two real unique poison types in toxic croak and toxicity the reason i say they are unique is because not only are they very very alone in their type combination being of course electric and poison and poison and fine but they do something that poison types rarely do which is being somewhat speedy having somewhat of a actually decent setup and more so actually are offensively capable versus almost anything they are so good as a whole and while you know their smoke and OU meta might not represent that in leagues it's where these guys shines because of their flexibility and because of their niches of doing a lot of things really well and yeah it's all of course me to go over their overarching theme with stats move pool and actually, I'll be honest, niches <laughs> to find out which one of these two that really are better. And for all the right reasons, we're going to cover the Pokemon introduced first. And uh, that will be, of course, the Toad itself from Generation 4, Toxic Croak. So what makes Toxic Croak so unique? Well, it really is all about the timing, isn't it? And the type of combination itself, Poison and Finding, do give you resistance to Bug, but also Dark, Finding, Grass, Poison and Rock. And of course, due to Poison, you are taking a neutral hit to Fairy, so it's kind of a niche thing, but at the same time, it's something rather valuable. And the weaknesses aren't really that many. Weakness to Flying and Ground and very weak to Psychic. So clearly that's something you need to watch out for. Then again, this combination is not necessarily something I want to do something that's in a Poison type. It has capability of doing something against it, but one should definitely keep in mind that you, you are not a very smart man if you are staying yourself in knowing you will be KO'd. So I just gotta have that said. It, the weaknesses are working with it. And when it comes to its stat distribution, it's fairly interesting. High HP of 83, 106 in its attack, defenses are both at 65, so a bit on the frail side. Special attack is usual at 86, and the speed here is for a poison type, quite fair. It is 85, it's the same speed here as Heracross, it's the same speed here as Sork, and Pesimium I do believe. But anyway, it actually is a really strong speed here, as it does allow you to work, well, faster than most defensive tanks, and to an extent, uh, you're able to actually force yourself really really offensively naturally versus a more speedier threat as they necessarily won't be able to kill you in return and this Pokemon stinks back um, the ability anticipation dry skin and poison touch yeah two of them are really great anticipation might have been better in a generation where hidden power was a thing but since that's gone you should be more likely to know when a Pokemon are about to hit you with a super effective move as anticipation makes you know the opposing Pokemon has a move that is super effective towards you. Uh, the other one, Dry Skin, is its most common ability as it does leave you with a new weakness in being weak to fire, but you get recovered HP by both Rain and if you get hit by Rain move. Uh, the reason that is so good is because it does mean that Toxic Croak naturally works in an environment where you can use a Rain team the reason Toxic Grove feels a niche there is because of its resistance to grass, as it is usually the thing that kinda of push water teams or rain teams back. So that's incredible for it. And Poison Touch is kinda of nice, as it does allow you to poison a Pokemon if you go in for a contact move, and you have 30% chance of poison them, and um, you never know when that comes to clutch. It also will mean that Poison Jab has inferior 50% chance of toxing a Pokemon. And it, that's, there's nothing bad about that, and it's incredible. It is also is the reason why Toxic Grove is so flexible in the league, because Dry Skin might not always be the option, but Poison Touch and shipping Pokemons by actually getting them poisoned, yeah, you don't have many Pokemons to do that, I do believe the Pokemon that are most famous for it are Alola Muck, and uh, Toxic Grove are able to do the same thing, but maybe not with the same tankiness and reliability. But it doesn't matter. Just the option that it can do it makes it one of the most interesting poison types not only in this generation, but since the generation was introduced. It is wonderful. I love Toxic Croak. I think it's great. But, as you guys know, a Pokemon is only as good as its move pulls allows it to be. So, what is it about Toxic Croak that makes it so good? So, yeah, it clearly is its move pool that is Toxic Croak's absolute 
with most incredible and most distinguished assets. Like the stats itself, it's it's nice, but it's nothing special to bear another fighting type. But we have three ways of setup out of two being relevant. We have bulk up, which is the one you forget. Then we have sword stance, massive power output, and then we have nasty plot, which means it could use both of its offensive spectrums to do really high damage. And not only that, we have three ways, actually four ways of priority. We have on the physical side, we have Fake Out, and we have Sucker Punch and Bullet Punch. Incredible moves for this Pokemon. But we also have on the special side, Vacuum Wave, a very rare special priority move. A and that kind of helps, like that's great for it as it is, while it's speedy, if you kind of capitalize on the cap of actually getting yourself um, set up, you don't kind of capitalize all that much on speed. Having priorities are just the difference between absolute ravaging through team and not. Um, other thing that stands out is that this Pokemon didn't get close combat this generation. It is unfortunate, but it does have Drain Punch, which is really good for this Pokemon with Life Orb as you do recover your residual damage. And we also have Focus Blast, which is incredible in its own right. And when it comes to its physical stab moves on its special or poison side, we have Belch, we have Cross Poison, you have Poison Jab, Gunk Shot, and um, Poison Sting if you want to use that, uh, and Sludge Wind, Sludge Bomb. Great moves to have. And on his filler side, if you don't have you know, the bad matchup, look, ground type, for example, do kind of re rely on the checking this Pokemon. It gets Icy Wind on the special side, and on the physical, we have Ice Punch, Thunder Punch. And, and that's great. It even gets Earthquake and Dark Pulse. So, even, you know, Bounce. It, it gets Bounce. There's no reason it gets Bounce, but it gets Bounce because it's a frog, and that makes sense. It also Rock Slide, Stone Edge. It just it gets all the right things. And uh, it can also use itself as a potential stall breaker with its haunt. And if you're going against Sylveon, well, you got Throat Chop, you can potentially screw them over right there. And then you win that matchup too. So overall, Toxicroak has so many assets to make it great. While it doesn't shine necessarily in smoke and OU or anything like that, one has to keep in mind one real strong thing. In a league aspect, being able to do all of these roles and thrive with these assets. It makes this Pokemon not only unique in its own right, but also very, very offensively good. Hard to prep for, and can, you know, break open a team naturally. If you do the right thing in the right matchup, this Pokemon is invaluable. It might be NU this generation, but it's never been as good as it is now. It is absolutely one of the best poison types in the game, and um, I respect this Pokemon as it always has been relevant. But now it's just really, really good. So with that said, we are of course gonna look. We'll have Toxtricity on this guy. Now, where do I start off with Toxtricity? Electrigum Poison. What does it do? It does a lot of things, right? The resistance is, is so good in this Pokemon. We have Bug, Electric, Fairy, Finding, Flying, Grass, Poison, Steel. It's so many resistances that I would compare it to one of the best defensive types in the game, which would be Steel type. It's just, it's so natural how many things this Pokemon actually can take hits from. And then we have weaknesses in and Psychic, which is alright, and very weak to ground, which is something to always keep in mind. Probably more so since this Pokemon can't use anything to make itself stay afloat. One could only hope that it gets Magnet Rise with tutor moves in the future, but as of right now, yeah, that's something, isn't it? Uh, when it comes to standard region, it's quite fair. Uh, it doesn't doesn't have as high HP as Toxicroak. 75 is all right. The defenses are split at 70, so slightly higher. And then we have attack and special attack, which is really nice here. 98 is a very usable offensive stand, and special attack at 114. Hmm, that's a lot. That's a whole lot, actually. And the speed, while low at 75, is still for a poison type rather speedy. And for electric type, maybe not so much. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's alright. But uh, 725, like I said, it's fair. It has actually ways of remedy that, but not... I, I really gotta say it. It is defensive enough to be that slow. Uh, it doesn't necessarily matter because of that defensive typing. And then we have the other aspect, which, you know, makes sense. And that is its abilities, plus Punk Rock and Technician. Plus is more for the low-key variant, which uh, gets plus and minus. And it actually gets Magnetic Flux, which boosts both of its defenses by one. Uh, but that's not why I'm going to use this Pokemon, as it doesn't have any defensive recovery, at least not now. 
but we have Punk Rock which boosts every sound base move by 50% basically giving them a stab distribution and with it has moves that actually can use that yeah it's it's cool it's great I love it and then we have Technician which as of right now isn't that usable uh, or usable as it boosts your 6 base power move to 90 in theory or if everything gets a little bit of 50% boost uh, but right now the only thing I believe against that are useful is Acid Spray and Snarl uh, but quite frankly since Punk Rock boosts other moves so well, you're always going to use Punk Rock. And the reason is, of course, for, because it's move pool, because it's really great. So let's actually talk about that. I realize I said it wrong about Punk Rock. It's not 50%, it's 30%. It still has a lot of that high damage. And the reason I want to focus on that is because this Pokemon has a few things going its way. On the physical side, and not only does it get a lot of physical moves are relevant with Poison Jab, Fire Punch for Steel Types and Fair Form primarily and the Thunder Punch but you also have Drain Punch and it gets Shift Gear which boosts its attack by one but also negates its low speed and that is always a great asset to have. It's not the best move pool for it but Shift Gear do allow it to be speedy so even a special side or a special set can use Shift Gear just to negate its low speed. It's basically the agility uh, but yeah, this special set of course where it's at, as this move pool is really good. Boom Burst, which is a sound based move, 140 base power plus a 30% attack or a special attack. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. It is absolutely its highest damage output naturally. It gets Overdrive, which is an electric type based sound move. And that boost makes it almost as strong as Thunder. But you know, I think it gets on 17 and stuff like that. So just below it, but being consistent of you know 100 accuracy is always a scary thought. And uh, well, it's, yeah, it's slower than Boomers. Like, how about that? <laughs> and then we have um, the other sound based move, which is Snarl, which it can get Technician boost. You want to use that, but you know, Technician and, and Punk Rock is almost the same. So Snarl is just as good on Punk Rock as it is on Technician. And we also have Full Switch, so a slow pivot option. And yeah, that's great. If you don't want to be speedy and want to use specs, Full Switch can be plenty, absolute plenty. And on the low key, we actually have Solar Beam. Uh, which means you can hurt ground types if you want to or ground rock types but boom burst is well, always stronger <laughs> even if it's used super effectively i do believe boom burst hits almost as hard than that solar beam and you know wasting a power herb in contrast to let's have in specs yeah i do believe boom burst is always better uh, but overall that's the move pool it has like a, i think an acid spray which could be great for a more defensive set uh, mainly if you get the switching right you can retaliate with boom burst afterwards that you sting any team naturally and it gets stored power but you know with shifter being his only real uh, setup move i probably would avoid that and this pokemon was one of the few pokemon that learned toxic naturally but magnetic flux is probably the only set for it to capitalize on it and i don't believe due to lack of recovery that it can't use that all that well we also have endure together with endeavor which could be kept in mind and air impulse which could be also used and charge but yeah, like the move pool in this Pokemon is, of course, worse than Toxtro, way worse. But the damage output is really high, and not having a natural switch in for these combinations are making this Pokemon quite ferocious in Smogun UU, but also in Smogun OU, where if uh, Dark Trio gets banned, this guy is gonna come back because of that defensive typing is so good, and it forces out switches and it has a high damage output. It is quite annoying to deal with. In the league aspect, we have the same type of option. It is a Pokemon that is offensively very capable. It is defensive enough to pull off a lot of roles naturally, but definitely the tank role. Not because it is highly offensive, but because of the plethora of resistance hits. It makes this Pokemon very hard to take out on face value. And even with neutral hits, this guy can take them. Not well, but it does take them and force switches and always be able to boom burst if, it, if you don't have a ghost type to take him. And that is keeping in mind that this guy don't go for Snarl or Vol Switch to follow up turn. So yeah, Toxic Rock is incredible. The damage output is absolutely insane. And this makes this Pokemon very, very dangerous. So for me, what this dialogue all boils down to are two things. Smoke and OU define one of them, and League might define one of them. It's just who is con most consistent. Toxic Rock is not that good in Smoke and OU. Shouldn't be defined as that. It does work in Rain Team. And uh, once they're set up, this Toxicroak is a very dangerous Pokemon. However, Toxtricity comes in dangerous on the spot. It is defensive enough and with, of course, its signature 
type combination, it is able to win against a few matchup and get high damage output naturally. It does make Toxtricity one of the more dangerous Pokemon in Smogon OU. Toxtrope doesn't have that. However, in leaks, we are talking about something else. We're talking about, you know, being more flexible and have a lot more things to offer. Same thing here, Toxtricity, it's dangerous on the spot, but it's not that flexible. It has two distinguished sets that always will work, and uh, it is a spec set together with, of course, potentially being a mixed sweeper. Toxicroak can be physical, it can be special, it can be stall breaker, and it could be overall annoying. It's speedier than Toxtricity, and um, it has priority, and it pressures teams so much. So, while I do believe Toxicroak is an incredible league aspect, and I'm always gonna say that Toxicroak is better than Toxtricity in a league, when we talk about consistency and who does things right the most, Toxtricity needs to be the one winning here, and it's not because I prefer it, it is because of the assets it brings to the table. It's very easy for me to say that, you know, Toxtricity is always gonna be the one that's going off best, but Toxicroak in the league aspect, I'll honestly believe, are better in many ways, but Toxtricity is always gonna be that one consistent pull. It does one thing really well, and that is break apart team. Toxicroak is more of a support player and has assets to do things really well, but Toxtricity is more consistent, and that is when I win. Why I win this matchup? So I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. As I, I thought it was an interesting matchup, and I was just happy to talk about Toxicroak again. It is a very, very uh, unappreciated Pokemon. This type combination for me are incredible, and I really want that type being revised. Toxicroak is just forgotten. Toxicroak, however, really glad to have that combination active. And for the next episode, I'm actually going to showcase more about the move pools. I do recognize that a, f a few has actually said that, you know, they want to see it more than actually hear it. And I get it. And I'm going to work a bit on the designs to get that right. And, um, of course, with that said, um, you know, look forward to our next matchup. And if you want to, make sure to check out the older videos, which are going to be somewhat relevant now in the future. But, yeah, I just, I, you know, I'll see you guys there. But for the next episode... This is the matchup we're going to talk about.